This film depicts scenes of surgery and blood. Your discretion is advised. This is Sladger, only a few days old and already struggling alone without his mother. He could have been abandoned for a number of reasons, from human disturbance to his mother being ill. Without his mother to suckle from, he wouldn't survive, so the team came in to help. Let's follow along with them as they bring him into the centre. Sladger was first spotted by the centre's photo ID team in the Dollar Estuary on the 21st of June. The estuary is home to a rookery of harbour seals, where each year in the pupping season, June to July, mothers line the beach giving birth to and suckling their pups. Although the Dutch harbour seal population size is currently healthy, things like human interference can still harm seals, causing mothers to abandon their pups, along with entanglements among other concerns. Like some natural issues, for instance disease and extreme weather. In each case, the centre is ready to rehabilitate affected individuals if they would otherwise not survive. Let's hear from a member of the team to learn more about what happened in Slatter's case. Hello, I'm Matilde, one of the vet interns here at the SEAL Centre, and on behalf of my team, I will explain to you how the health condition of Slatter evolved. Some of our researchers that were observing SEALs on the field noticed it alone um, and with poor body condition. So as we usually do in these cases, they weighed him and uh, waited 24 hours and kept him under observation during this time. After that, he was visibly more dehydrated, he had lost weight and um, he was weaker than before. Uh, and we usually take this as a sign that uh, the pup was not suckling from its mother or another female and therefore we brought it in. Now we've heard why Slatcher was brought in, let's find out how. To identify Slatcher, the team used blue spray the day before, which you can see here. As Matilda said, Sladger's condition had visibly deteriorated and he had lost weight. You can see here that he was barely reactive. Once this was confirmed, he was placed into a transport box and taken to one of the centre's rescue vehicles. Once Sladger arrived at the centre, he went through the intake process, first being weighed so his weight gain progress could be tracked. Then bloods were taken, as these can indicate a number of concerns, for instance increased immune cells in the blood due to an infection. Next came tagging. Slatcher's was 23106, 23 being the year and 106 being the intake number. Then he was measured, again to track progress over his rehab. No swabs were next to check for potential infections. Lung checks are also needed to ensure they are functioning normally. Additionally, juvenile seals, not pups like Slatcher here, often arrive with lungworm infections which can affect lung function. Mouth checks look for any signs of trauma and include measuring a tooth to determine the age of the seal. The belly button needs to be checked for infection in pups as the umbilical cord will have only recently fallen off and the youngest pups may still be attached, so the wound will still be open. An antiseptic spray is also used to reduce infection risk. Finally comes feeding with salmon porridge, a calorie dense salmon emulsion to provide a high energy meal. After being brought into the centre, Slatcher began his rehab process in stage 1. At this point, Slatcher has been in the centre for over a month and has grown a lot since he first came in. Let's follow a morning in phase 1 with Slatcher to see what he's been up to. Slatcher's vitamins and medicines are crushed, ready to be given later. Along with other routine steps, a full clean happens every morning. When seal pups start in phase one, they receive salmon porridge. Later they graduate to eating fish, going from being force-fed to hand-fed to self-eating, like Slatter is here. Feedings in phase one happen four times a day. Also, when starting in phase one, seals aren't allowed to swim, so they can save their energy for recovery. Gradually, more swimming is allowed as the seal's condition improves. Seals in the wild receive all the water they need from the food they eat, but when seals begin to have fish in the centre, they aren't eating enough to be sufficiently hydrated. So they are tube fed water along with vitamins and any medications they need. Some of you may have noticed that Slatcher has a blue eye, 
which is why he is receiving antibiotic cream to prevent infection. You can see how much discomfort Slaggio has been in with the eye. Blinking and keeping it closed like that isn't normal. Let's take a closer look at the eye to understand what's going on. The issue with Slaggio's eye is due to trauma that impacted his cornea. The cornea sits at the front of the eye protecting it and directing light into it. It's made of three layers and this will be explained more throughout the video. Let's hear from Matilda again who will explain the issue in more depth. Two days after intake, Slaggio was suddenly keeping the right eye closed. Uh, we went to examine it and there was a visible lesion on the surface of the eye. So we did a fluorescein test, which is a dye that is able to stain ulcers on the cornea or surface of the eye. In the case of Slache, it was positive, so there was indeed an ulcer on the cornea. Uh, so we started treating it with antibiotic eye cream and anti-inflammatories to control the pain. The fluorescing test that Matilda mentioned works by dyeing the middle layer of the cornea because the dye can't stain the inner outer layers and this allows trauma to the eye to be identified while also dyeing the outer layer. With that in mind, let's allow Matilda to continue explaining the issue. So despite the treatment, the problem progressed. Slatche was keeping the right eye constantly closed, indicating that the pain had increased despite the painkiller. On top of that, the cornea was now totally white and this was indicating that there was a corneal edema. Corneal edema is when there's fluid that accumulates in the cornea, making it thicker and less transparent. We then decided to repeat the fluorescein test to see how the ulcer had progressed, and this time it didn't stain, so it was negative, indicating that, that there was a complication in pathology of the eye. The negative test was most likely due to the ulcer in the cornea developing into a perforation, meaning a hole, so the fluorescing test fluid falls through the cornea and cannot stain the middle layer. Having a perforated cornea means the antibiotic cream is even more important as the eye is now open to the environment and therefore infections. We decided to then do an ultrasound of the eye. We confirmed that all the structures in the eye were still intact, indicating that the problem was localized only in the cornea and this was good news. The ultrasound confirmed that all the structures inside the eye were intact. We considered that the eye was completely functional. The third eyelid flap technique is a very, is a very quick procedure that also uh, speeds up the healing process of the cornea. So we wanted to try this technique and make sure we tried everything we could before we considered removing the eye. Only one surgery is shown here, but Slatcha actually had two third eyelid flap surgeries to help continue the healing process as long as possible. To start the surgery, Slatcha was anaesthetised, whilst one of the nurses kept him still and covered his eyes to help him remain calm. Because seals stop breathing on their own whilst under anaesthetic, Slatcha had a breathing tube inserted, which was connected to a ventilator. Now he's ready for surgery, let's have Matilda explain what's going on. So seals, just like cats and dogs, have a third eyelid that can usually be seen when they're asleep. And what we did is that we took this third eyelid and we sutured it to the tissue or conjunctiva on top of the eye socket. Um, this way it covered the lesion and the whole cornea, giving it time to heal. After surgery, Slatch is monitored to make sure there are no adverse effects following anesthesia. Here he's resting on some hot water bottles because body temperature drops whilst under anesthetic, so it's important to make sure he stays warm. Here's the third eyelid flap close up and thankfully it doesn't seem to bother him too much. Following surgery, he's not allowed to swim for a little while. Once he's allowed again, he's very eager to get back into the pool. After 61 days in the centre and two surgeries, Slatcher has graduated to phase two. Let's follow the team as they move him into his new pool. First, he's microchipped, just like with your own pets. Then the team has to get him into a transport box for moving. They get his head in first, and then his rear, and all that's left is a gentle flip and he's ready to go. The vet team choose to graduate a seal from phase 1 to phase 2 based on general health, weight, swimming and eating ability. Slatcher kept gaining weight and could swim and eat well, but because of his eye, the team kept him in phase 1 until this point. There are other team members ready to take Slatcher inside to his new pool because they needed to be dressed, ready in clean gear to not risk spreading any disease between pools. Although now in phase two, Slatcher still needs his antibiotic eye cream to combat infection. 
Because he's no longer being given water by tube, the nurse places his drugs and daily vitamins inside the fish instead. So after two months in phase one, Slatcher finally gets to enjoy his first swim in a new pool, after giving it a small inspection first. Then comes his first feeding. The nurse threw in the fish containing the vitamins and drugs first to make sure he gets it, and then he's given the rest. Shortly after moving in, it was time to check the eye and take out the remaining stitches from the third eyelid flap surgery. Then a week after moving in, all medications were stopped to see if the third eyelid surgeries had been a success at allowing the eye to heal. Slatcher now gets to experience life outside of quarantines. He also gets to experience how much gulls like fish. He'll quickly learn to eat them underwater to prevent these thefts. Whilst having your breakfast stolen is certainly a novel experience, the centre also provides some more intentional stimulation for Slatcher, like this imitation seaweed. Initially Slatcher didn't seem too sure of his new enrichment, but as soon as it was in the water he seemed to enjoy himself. Different enrichments have cycled through to keep things fresh for Slatcher, but he seems to have preferred his seaweed. Plus, now that Slatcher has a bigger pool, he has much more room for swimming. And Slatcher can finally sit in the sunlight whenever he wants. Along with all the new fun Slatcher can have, he still needs regular weighings to check he's progressing. Thankfully, he has continued to gain weight, but the team also needs to check on the eye to make sure it hasn't worsened after stopping his medications. Now that Slatcher is nearly 30 kilograms, he's a lot stronger, so the nurses have to work harder to keep him still during checkups. Although tougher work for the team, it's great to see him gaining strength like this. For the test, which we spoke about earlier in phase one, a vet drops the fluorescent dye into the eye and then flushes it out, which is why there's liquid flowing down his face. Then a photo is taken to document whether it has been positive or negative. Unfortunately, this checkup indicated that the eye had not fully healed. What is presumed to have happened is that the outer layer of the cornea had healed, causing a negative test, but the layers below it were still damaged, meaning that if the surface of the eye was scratched, the eye would again be open to the environment. Let's hear from Matilda to explain what the vet team chose to do next. After a careful consideration of the case and after consultation with um, the ophthalmologist, we decided that the safest, quickest and best next step for Slatcher's recovery was to remove the eye. As with his previous surgeries, Slatcher was anaesthetized and intubated. He's then covered with a plastic sheet which is clipped around the eye, protecting it from contamination. Then the vets begin to gradually cut away tissue around the eye, giving them access to it. Eventually enough tissue has been removed, allowing them to cut away the final connective fibres, removing the eye. The cavity is filled with gauze to stem the bleeding, and the vets wait 10 minutes with this until the bleeding has slowed. Once the bleeding is reduced, the vets are able to remove the gauze and begin closing the wound. The vets go layer by layer of tissue, suturing until the cavity has been completely closed. Then the area is rinsed and wiped to clean off the blood. Now the surgery is complete, Slatcher was given an anaesthetic reverser to start waking him up, after which the breathing tube was removed and his breathing was assisted via an oxygen mask. 
Along with the anaesthetic reverser, the team gives him some encouragement to wake up. After plenty of convincing, Glatcher was alert enough to be moved, and the team take him back to his original quarantine pool to recover. As with his previous surgeries, Zlatja has to be monitored and kept awake to make sure he doesn't experience any adverse effects following the anaesthetic. You can see here just how much he wanted to fall back asleep, showing how important the post-surgery observation was. Also, you may be wondering why Zlatja was returned to his Phase 1 pool after having been moved to Phase 2. Here's Matilda again to explain why. It takes seals a while to recover from anesthesia, so we wanted to keep it in a controlled environment where we could closely monitor it, but also something that we wanted to monitor for the first few days after the surgery was the surgery wound and make sure that it was healing well and without any infection, sutures falling or breaking. So we'll catch up with him after he's recovered from surgery and been able to move forward into phase three. After over three months at the centre, Slatch has made it to phase three, the final step on his recovery journey at the centre before release. Before moving to this final phase, Slatch has spent the immediate period after surgery in quarantine and then moved back to his phase two pool when close observation was no longer needed. Once back in the phase two pool, he just needed to keep gaining weight to be moved, which thankfully he did. Most of his time at the centre was spent alone due to his eye surgeries, but now he finally has a big pool to explore and gets to meet his new pool mate. He seems to especially like Gripus. After all of the challenges Slatcha went through, let's take some time to watch him getting to relax and enjoy himself. Along with getting to swim in a larger pool and interact with other seals, the team keeps providing enrichment. This is a new piece made of fire hose, which acts as an engaging way for the seals to get their fish. Naturally, there's some contest for who gets the last fish, and it looks like Slatcha won in this case, clearly having just one eye isn't holding him back. But in case any of you are worried that he won't be okay in the wild, Let's hear from Matilda one more time to explain why he'll be okay. Yes, seals can be released with only one eye. They can uh, adapt very well to decreased vision uh, as they can compensate with the other functional eye and also with the whiskers that they have that are very sensitive and detect um, very slight movements and vibrations and allowing them to forage without any problem. Today is the day, after 113 days at the centre, Slatcha is going back home. Normally releases happen using a boat, but today the weather is too rough, so it'll be a car journey instead. The first step of getting ready for release is to drain the pool. As the pool drains, Slatcha and his pool mates get a unique opportunity to play around in the shallows.
It looks like Gripus doesn't want to give up the enrichment cube and has made himself quite comfy on top of it. Eventually Gripus seems less opposed to sharing. When larger pools are emptied for weighing and releases, the team has a chance to clean it. A nurse uses a towel to secure Slatia, as this can help give more control and safety when handling larger seals. Before he can head off for release, a few more checks are completed. First, blood is taken, in this case from a hind flipper. Normally blood is taken from the back, but Slatia is so large at this point, the needle wasn't long enough. Two vials are taken as each is used for different tests. Next, nose and mouth swabs are taken. The nose swabs are especially hard in seals as their nostrils are closed at rest. One final step is for Slatch to be weighed. So as usual, he's placed into a transport box to be taken to the scales. finished his time at the centre weighing 32.8 kilograms, meaning he gained over 25 kilograms since arriving. The last thing to do is get him and his poolmates into the van and drive to the release site. It's just one short walk for the team before Slatja is ready to be released. As mentioned earlier, due to high winds a boat release wasn't possible, so the secondary site was used instead. Regardless, this is the moment. 113 days and countless hours of the team's support later, he's ready to go free. But just before we open that door, let's look back on his time here. Despite all the challenges he faced, he made it. Let's not keep him waiting any longer. Even out of the centre's pool, he stuck with Gripus as he began to explore this new environment. Eventually Gripus made his way out to sea and left Salatia to stay a little while longer.
One last look, and it was time to start the rest of his journey. <laughs>